So is this case actually going to be over? Well, it's not going to be over technically anytime soon, but the evidence is mounting against the SEC almost on a daily basis. Well, attorney John Deaton, who's actually filed a class action lawsuit against the SEC on behalf of 65,000 XRP holders, has just put together a huge, what he calls, exculpatory evidence as to what happened at a meeting in 2018 to prove that Ripple did not have any notice that they that the SEC may have considered XRP to be a security. So in this video, I'm going to lay out everything John Deaton put in his Twitter thread, which you can go visit, and discuss how this actually backs up Ripple's fair notice defense and pretty much completely destroys the SEC's case. So I'm going to lay out what was said in this meeting, which, by the way, was attended by the SEC's Jay Clayton and William Hinman, and by Ripple's Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz. And I'm going to talk about how this actually backs up Ripple's fair notice offense, and it pretty much destroys the SEC's case. Hey everyone, my name is Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. And right now on this channel, I'm covering the Ripple versus the SEC case, but I'm also covering cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all those topics interest you, make sure you hit the subscribe button, join the Late Night Grind community, and if you're feeling generous, I'd appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button and watch the video all the way to the end. Those are the two best things you can do to support a YouTube channel. So if you do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, let's jump into it. So in case you are not on Twitter or you don't follow John Deaton, well, you need to go follow John Deaton if you are on Twitter. But nonetheless, he actually posted what this meeting was actually about back in 2018 and exactly what they said. These were from uh, answers from depositions for both the SEC and Ripple side. So this meeting, like I said, was attended by Jay Clayton, William Hinman. They're pretty much at the center of this case on the SEC side, even though none of them are with the SEC currently. And it was also attended by Brad Garlinghouse, who is, of course, the CEO of Ripple, and David Schwartz, who is one of the creators of the XRP ledger and also the CTO of Ripple. So this this happened on August 20th, 2018, about two and a half months after William Hinman gave his famous Ethereum is not a security speech, to which Brad and David actually got to sit down with Bill and Jay and discuss it. So basically, Brad and Dave were kind of frustrated that only two of the top three cryptocurrencies were actually labeled non-securities in Bill Hinman's speech. Those were the only two that got regulatory clarity whereas XRP did not. So Brad's statement was actually that Ripple is kind of living in purgatory because of the lack of clarity regarding XRP. So as John Dean points out, if at that moment, Jay Clayton or Bill Hinman thought or knew that XRP was a security or could be a security, was labeled any kind of security, that at that moment they could have told Ripple, well, we believe XRP is a security and therefore you should stop selling it, unless of course it's registered. But instead, Jay Clayton actually responded that that wasn't the proper forum or the proper meeting to have that discussion. Really? Maybe he misremembered. So at the time, neither Clayton nor Hinman actually bothered to tell Ripple that what they thought XRP was possibly a security. Instead, Jay Clayton actually backed up and then steered the meeting into a discussion about Ripple's uh, technical products and their technologies. And not only that, at the end of the meeting, Jay Clayton actually told Ripple, actually told David and Brad that they need to continue to have meetings uh, with SEC's division of corporate finance. So at no time during this meeting at all did the SEC actually tell Ripple or even insinuate that XRP could possibly be a security at that time. But let's back up a little bit because as, because as John Deaton points out, the SEC actually did a Howey analysis of XRP, which is basically a test that they use to find out if something may or may not be a security. They actually did this test about a month and a half before this particular meeting. So the fact that they already had analysis that showed their discussions uh, of whether they thought XRP was a security or not was already done. If they had thought it was a security, they should have or would have brought it up in that meeting. And if they did, they would have told them that we believe it's a security and that you need to stop selling it without it being registered. In fact, the first time that Ripple was actually aware that the SEC was going to consider XRP to be a security wasn't until 2020. Actually, it wasn't until September 2020, only about a couple of months before the SEC actually dropped this lawsuit on Ripple the day Jay Clayton left the SEC. So John Deaton is absolutely going nuclear on this, and he has a brilliant case. He's actually pulling up evidences from what was discussed during certain meetings and certain timeframes. Like I said, if, you don't, if you're don't, if you not following him on Twitter, you need to go do so. So how does this back up Ripple? Well, this basically ends the case of the SEC because at the time, because Ripple is using their fair notice defense, claiming they had no idea that XRP could be considered a security. They've actually been having meetings with the SEC for years about that specific topic. 
The, S the SEC actually had a meeting of, of whether or not XRP was a security in back in 2018 and didn't even let Ripple know about it, even at this 2018 meeting. And in fact, only being about a month and a half later, that would have been a fresh, brand new news from the SEC's perspective. You'd think it might have been something that they would talk about at this meeting. So John Deaton is absolutely right. This is huge, huge evidence that backs up Ripple's fair notice defense. And even more important that they get this motion struck down from the SEC, that the SEC is trying to strike down Ripple's fair notice defense, not allowing them to use it when they go to trial. Because if Ripple's fair notice defense is allowed to be used at trial, Evidences like this meeting will absolutely be front and center in this case, and the SEC is going to have to explain everything away and try to provide information and, tr and come up with reasons why they think Ripple, Brad, and Chris Larson were recklessly selling things that the SEC says that they knew were unregistered securities at the time, and not just at the time, ongoing for years and years and years. So it's not looking good for the SEC. John Deaton is doing an amazing service to Ripple in this case. And in fact, with the friend of the court status that he has, he's gonna be able to provide some insights that a lot of other people will not. So I wanted to make this video because as I saw this was getting big engagement on Twitter, I knew I had to make this video because it clearly, clearly shows that Ripple is in the right on this and getting this out to the world of YouTube would be a little bit more, would get, would get even more eyeballs on this and hopefully get even more more attention from some possible mainstream sources. I know we're getting some uh, stories from Forbes finally written in about this case. We're finally getting some uh, Fox Business News from Charles Gasparino and Eleanor Tourette about this case. And we need to continue to get more pressure and more mainstream coverage of this case because it's evidences like this that show that this case is just essentially to, to suppress the price of XRP. There are too many people, organizations, enterprises that have huge question marks about the use of XRP, specifically in the United States because of this case. And my goodness, when XRP hits exchanges again, the price is almost instantly going to shoot up to what it should be trading at during this market cycle. And now, during this time of war, Russia just invaded the Ukraine. Now you have discussions about global leaders, global about global economic leaders attempting to possibly kick Russia off the SWIFT system which Ripple is said to replace or at least be a competing measure with, is it actually going to happen? Because now you have countries like Germany saying, no, that's not gonna happen. Well, why is Germany saying no? Well, because Germany gets 50% of its gas from Russia. They are not about to bite the hand that feeds them. It's one of the things that's difficult in war because Russia knows that they have that on Germany and knows that they have the upper hand in, in something like maybe or maybe not getting kicked off of a SWIFT system. The SWIFT discussion brings up Ripple because Ripple's on-demand liquidity system is absolutely a competitor to SWIFT. And right now, all of that attention could actually be on Ripple and their potential to overtake the SWIFT system as an instant settlement system, but instead it's mired in this court case of whether or not XRP is a security, whether or not Ripple knew it was a security or not, and whether or not they broke the law recklessly selling this so-called security to investors. So support John Teton, make sure you go follow him on Twitter. I will. I will continue to post his content here on this channel because he is absolutely spot on. So if you wanna follow along with this story or any of the other stories that I'm following, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you subscribe to the Late Night Grind community. I really appreciate you watching this video all the way to the end for giving it a big thumbs up. And I always say those are the two best things that you can do to support a YouTube channel. And it's true from an analytics perspective, it's 100% true. It's what YouTube sees and deems to be considered good, credible content. So by doing that, you're really helping out my channel. And of course, be on the lookout for a video that is coming up where I talk about what Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are gonna be doing globally. I'm gonna be talking about all the different countries that are looking to make it legal tender coming up, including some separate United States that are looking to make it legal tender. So be on the lookout for that video. All right, guys, I appreciate you hanging out all the way to the end of this video. Forget to the big thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.